hello viewers uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing using matlab so in the previous lecture we have discussed that if we have a non uniform distributed nodal points then how we can approximate a unique uh, interpolating polynomials based on those nodal values so today we'll continue with this one and we'll discuss the lagrange interpolation polynomials so today i am going to use that how to find the lagrange interpolating polynomial so i know that suppose i have some data points that is given to me so suppose this is my x0 y0 this is my x1 y1 then i have here x2 y2 this is x i minus 1 x i x i x i plus 1 and then i have x n y n so this is n plus 1 data points are given to me and then based on this one so this points if you see this is given here this is here then this is here then this is here so this nodal points x0 x1 x0 x1 x2 xn are not equispaced so in this case i want to find the interpolating polynomial such that that is passing through all these points so it is passing through all these points and that in unique interpolation interpolating polynomial i want to find so so let's start with the expression so i will take the case 1 so in the case 1 i will talk about first of all linear interpolation So in this case, I have only two points that is given to me. So this is one point x zero y zero, and this is another point that is x one y one. So this is my interpolating polynomial. So I define the let. I define the p one x that is interpolating polynomial as e zero plus e one x a one x a zero plus a one x. Now. this is the interpolating polynomial so it should pass through the points so if i put x0 so it should be a0 plus a1 x0 and that should be equal to y0 and then i define p1 at x1 so that is a0 plus a1 x1 and that should be equal to y1 so this is the corresponding two equation i get from here and this can be written as a system of equation so this expression i can write in the form of a matrix form so this is 1 x0 and 1 x1 and this is the a0 and a1 and on the right hand side i have the value that is known to to us at the point of x0 and y0 so this is the system i want to solve for linear interpolation so in this case i know that this is my matrix a so and this the determinant of this matrix is x1 minus x0 so i know that x0 and x1 are distinct point so it means that this matrix is a non singular matrix now i can solve this one with the help of a inverse of the given matrix and so this can be written as inverse and y0 y1 now from here i know that 1 x0 1 x1 the inverse of this matrix is equivalent to so this one i can write the determinant and the so the determinant of this matrix is x1 minus x0 and the adjoint of this matrix is coming that is x1 minus x0 
minus 1 and 1. So this is 1. So now based on this one, I get my solution A0 and A1. So that is equal to x1 minus x0, x1 minus x0 minus 1, 1 and that is y0, y1. So from here, if I write down the form, so it, this becomes x1, y0 minus x0, y1 divided by x1 minus x0. So this is the first row I am doing. So in the, in the second one, I will get minus y0 plus y1 by x1 minus x0. So from here, I can get the value of a0. So that is x1 y0 minus x0 y1 divided by x1 minus x0 and a1 is y1 minus y0 x1 minus x0. So this is the value I am getting minus x0. Now if I substitute this value in the given expression, then my linear polynomial P1x can be written as x1 y0 minus x0 y1 x1 minus x0 plus a1 x1 minus x0 into x. Now if I want to verify that whether it is satisfying the interpolating polynomial properties or not that at the nodal points its value should be same. So if I put x p1 x0, so in this case this expression actually can be written in this form also 1 over x1 minus x0. So y0 I can take common. So from here this become x1 and from here minus x. So it become x1 minus x y0 plus and this y1 I can take common. So this will be x minus x0 y1. So this can be written like this also. So from here I can see very clearly this, that if I put x is equal to x0, then this will cancel out and this will be x0 and this x, x1 minus x0 will cancel out and will get y0. And if I put x is equal to x1, in that case this will be 0, this value will be 0 and then from here x1 minus x0, this will be cancel it, I will get y1. So that is the corresponding interpolating polynomial. So this interpolating polynomial, generally we will write directly looking at the points, we can write this polynomial as p1x is equal to x minus x1 divided by x0 minus x1. So this I can write here y0 plus x minus x0 divided by x1 minus x0 y1. So I am writing the coefficient of y0. So I put x minus x1 divided by x0 minus x1. So this expression is same, only difference is that if I put x is equal to x0 here, then this will cancel out and become 1. Similarly, I am putting the coefficient of y1. So I will taking leaving uh, leaving the coefficient of y1 and taking the another one. So it will be x minus x0 divided by x1 minus x0. So that is the expression for linear, the Lagrange linear interpolation, interpolating polynomial. Now the coefficient this coefficient and the, this coefficient, they have some specific names. So I can write my expression P1x is equal to L1, 1 means it is a linear function defined at x0, y0 plus L11 at x, y1, where 
L 1 0 x is this expression x minus x x minus x 1 divided by x naught minus x 1 and L 1 1 is equal to x minus x 0 x 1 minus x 0. So, these two factors are called Lagrange's fundamental polynomial. So, this fundamental polynomials has some properties. So, from here I can write that this this fundamental uh, polynomials has some property. So, from here I can write that also if I put L 1 0 x plus L 1 1 x. So, if I am adding all this together, so I will get from here x minus x 1 plus x minus x naught x 1 minus x naught and from here I will get this value. So, x 1 minus x naught I can take common. So, this will be minus x plus x 1 plus x minus x naught. So, this x will cancel out and x 1 minus x naught this will also cancel out. So, its value will be 1. So, from here that the sum of these Lagrangian polynomials that is value is equal to 1. Also, so this is the first property. The second property is that L 1 0. So, it is the interpolating polynomial the fundamental polynomial the linear and defined and 0. So, if I put x 0 its value should be 1 and if I put L 0 x 1 its value should be 0. Similarly, 1 1 x 0 it should be 0 and L 1 1 at x 1 it should be 1. So, from here I can write that any L i. So, if I talking about this one, so I can write that L. So, I am talking about the linear only. So, L i x j. So, this is equal to delta i j. So, that is equal to 1 when i is equal to j and 0 when i is not equal to j. So, that is the expression for the fundamental uh, Lagrange fundamental polynomials. So, this is the properties we have to keep in mind for the Lagrangian fundamental polynomials. So, based on this one, so this is the we have defined only for two points. The similarly, suppose I have three points that is given to me one point is here, one point is here and one point is here. So, this is my x 0, y 0 and x 2, y 2. So, only three points are given to me. So, in this case if I want to find the interpolating polynomial, so, this will be like this one. So, in this case I will define the second order Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So, in this case we have three points. So, I will write, try to write down the the equation the quadratic polynomial directly like here from the taking that here I am defining the point coefficient of y naught. So, I am taking the other all the other point except x 0 here I am taking all the point except x 1. So, now from here that we have the points x 0 x 1 and x 2 such that I will define that x 0 is less than x 2, x 1 and x 2. So, we are taking in the ascending order. Now, from here I want to write the quadratic polynomial because this will passing through three points. So, we can define the quadratic polynomial. So, I will write that p 2 x. So, in the form of p 2 x I can start with this a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square and then I am defining the properties of this one. 
so p2 at x0 is a0 plus a1 x0 plus a2 x0 square and that is equal to y0. Similarly, p2 x1 is equal to a0 a1 x1 a2 x1 square that is equal to y1 and p2 x2 that is a0 plus a1 x2 plus a2 x2 whole square that is equal to y2. And now from here I will get this matrix. So, this is 1 x 0 x 0 square 1 x 1 x 1 square 1 x 2 x 2 square and writing the expression for a 0 a 1 a 2 and this is my y 0 y 1 y 2. So, this is the corresponding system of equation we are getting and now if we solve this one then I can write. So, after solving the same way we can uh, solve. So, after solving this system of equations we get and now from here I can write my p 2 x directly. So, this should be equal to now I have a point x 0 x 1 x 2. So, I am writing the coefficient corresponding to x 0. So, I will leave x 0 and I will write x minus x 1 into x minus x 2 and then I put x 0 minus x 1 x 2 and then this is equal to y 0. Now, I write the coefficient of y 1. So, I am leave the x 1. So, I will write x minus x naught x minus x 2 and then I put x 1 minus x naught and x 1 minus x 2 and that is y 1 plus x minus x naught x minus x 1 divided by x 2 minus x naught and x 2 minus x 1 and that is y 2. So, that is the the quadratic polynomial interpolating polynomial we can write directly with the help of the previous example the linear interpolation. So, this will be the quadratic polynomial interpolating polynomial and from here I can write that this will be L 2 0 x. So, that is a fundamental uh, interpolating polynomial this is L 2 1 x and this expression is L to 2 x. So, from here we can verify that L to 0 x plus L to 1 x plus L to 2 x that is equal to 1 if I take the sum of this one and also from here I can see that L to 0 x 0 if I am putting x equal to x 0 here this will cancel out. So, its value will be 1 and L 2 0 x 1. So, x 1 is x 1. So, it will be 0 and L 2 0 x 2 that will be also 0. So, from here you can say that this is also satisfying the second property of the this delta function we have defined. So, based on this one we can write the quadratic interpolating polynomial which satisfying whose coefficient as a fundamental Lagrangian polynomial satisfy the corresponding conditions for the coefficients. So, from here now I will try to write down the general Lagrange interpolation. So, now we can write a nth degree Lagrange interpolating 
polynomial. So now we have a x0, x1, x2 up to xn. So these are the values, nodal values that is given to me. Now I can rearrange this form in this in the ascending order because this is, uh, is non-uniformly distributed. So I can rearrange that one in the in this ascending order form. Now based on this one, I want to define the nth order. So p n I can write. So p n x will be. I'm writing the coefficient of x zero. So I will write x minus x one, x minus x two, x minus x n divided by x zero minus x one, x zero minus x two, and in the end x zero minus x n. y0 plus x minus x0, x minus x2 and x minus xn divided by x1 minus x0, x1 minus x2 and this x1 minus xn. This is equal to y1 plus, <coughs> so in the, uh, if I go the ith one I can write as x minus x0 x minus x1, x minus x i minus 1, x minus x i plus 1 and x minus x n divide by x i minus x 0, x i minus x1, x i minus x i minus 1, x i minus x i plus 1 and in the end x i minus x n, this is corresponding to the y i. <coughs> so in the end I will get minus x, x minus x 0, x minus x 1 up to x minus x n minus 1 divided by x n minus x 0, x n minus x 1 and x n minus x n minus 1 that is equal to y i. So based on this one, I am able to write the nth degree Lagrange interpolating polynomial where I can define my expression L nth degree polynomial for any kth coefficient. So this is equal to x minus x naught. x k plus 1 x minus x n and it is divided by x k minus x 0, x k minus x 1, x k minus x k minus 1, x k minus x k plus 1, x k minus x n. So that will be the any kth fundamental Lagrange polynomial we can write directly. And this can be also written in the form of, so I can write this as a x minus x i product I am taking i from 0 to n and i is not equal to k divided by in the product of x k minus x i. From here I am getting i from 0 to n and i is not equal to k. So this expression I can write in the directly for the Lagrangian polynomial. So this is the way we can define the fundamental Lagrangian interpolating polynomial. Now we want to define from here the error involved. So error involved in the Lagrangian interpolating polynomial. So we know that in the previous cases also the 
error involved I have written the Rx. So, Rx can be written as x minus x naught. So, these are the all the nodal values this value is written at the nodal value x0 x1 and from here it is equal to f n plus 1 xi over n plus 1 factorial where this xi belongs to any value between x0 to x1. So, in this case also if I know the value of the function I take its n plus 1 th derivative and then there is some xi exist in between such that this value is given. So, that is the error we can find and if I take this maximum value of this then this is the maximum error involved in this one. Okay. So, this is the way we can find the, the error involved in the Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So, after ex doing this all this expression we want to define the drawback of this one. So, what is the drawback here? The first one is that for, for moderately large number of data points that is when n is quite large, then we have to approximate or we have to constitute higher degree polynomial which is computationally very costly. So, which is a computationally very costly. It means that suppose I have n is equal to 100, then we have to constitute. So, n is the, the number of points we are suppose 100, then we have to constitute 99th degree polynomial and finding the 99th degree polynomial is quite a expensive in the terms of computations. So, that is the drawback that we have a if a large value of data is given to us then it is very difficult to write the higher degree polynomials. The second one is that if for each one additional tabular value whole of the computation is to be done ag again like we have the 5 points, suppose my 5 points are given to me x0, x1, x2, x3 and x4. So, these 5 points are given to me and I will based on this one I will constitute the interpolating polynomial, 4th degree polynomial. Then somebody asked me that okay, we add one more point say and let us add this one. So, now we have a 6 points. So, in this case I have to constitute the whole process again so that I am I should be able to write the fifth degree interpolating polynomial now. So, if I add just one point then the whole process we have to repeat. So, that is why if we add one point then the same process will be repeated and the again the whole computational we have to do again and again. So, that cost me a lot. So, that is it can be told that it is a computationally costly. So, that is the another drawback of this one. So, first drawback was that higher degree polynomial and second drawback was this one that adding one more points needs the all whole the process repeat uh, again. So, let us stop today here. So, today we have started with the linear 
Lagrange interpolating polynomial. And then based on this one, we have discussed the quadratic and the nth degree Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So, in the next class also we will continue with this one. So, thanks for watching this uh, lecture, uh, thanks very much.